Hello everyone, I am Pawan Kumar Shak, PhD scholar from IIT Kanpur. I am the TA for the course of Elements of Solar Energy Converter. Today is the seventh discussion hour for this course. So, till now we have solved some problems uh, based on the topics like relation, be relation between the different angles. After that, we have solved some problems on shading. As we have seen that there are three types of problems that you will face in this topic. After that, in the last discussion hour, I have discussed the flat plate collector losses. Okay. So, that we have covered till now. Today, in today's discussion hour, I will discuss the flat plate collector problems. Okay, such as <coughs> collector heat removal factor, after that we will see that uh, what is the critical radiation level and in the end we will see different types of different geometries related to the collector okay so let's start with the first problem so the first problem is find out the mass flow rate of water to obtain a steady outlet temperature of 85 degree c with a conventional liquid flat plate collector of area 1.8 meter square and a heat removal factor that is 0.85 given when the rate of radiation absorption that is 700 watt per meter square also it is given in the problem that the overall loss coefficient is 4.5 watt per meter square kelvin water inlet temperature is given ambient temperature and the specific heat of water so we will see that what are the parameters given in the problem so in the problem it is given that the outlet temperature that is we denote as TFO that is 85 degree Celsius then the area of the collector is given as 1.8 meter square heat removal factor that is FR that is equal to the 0.85 and solar radiation absorption is given as 700 watt per meter square also the overall loss coefficient is given that is 4.5 watt per meter square Kelvin fluid inlet temperature that is TFI is given as 60 degree Celsius ambient temperature TA this one is 27 degree C Celsius and the specific heat of water that is C is given as 4.2 kilojoule per kg Kelvin okay and in the problem the mass flow rate has been asked okay so m dot it is asked in the problem so till now you have seen that we can write the energy that is taken by the fluid can be written as q u equal to f r a c s minus c u l t f i minus t a okay so this is the relation that uh, you have uh, derived in the lectures given by the professor and uh, uh, this is in terms of fluid inlet temperature and the ambient temperature. Next what we can say that uh, this is the heat absorbed or carried by the fluid inside the tube. So we can write it as m dot, m dot c and the fluid inlet temp. Uh, difference in the temperature from the inlet to the outlet so that is tfo minus tfi okay so from here we can say we can see that uh, the other parameters like fr ac s ul tfi ta c tfo and tfi is given in the problem and the mass flow rate has been asked so we can write it as m dot is equal to FR AC S minus UL T 
TFI minus T ambient temperature divided by specific heat multiplied by the temperature difference for the fluid. Okay. So when we will put the values that is given, in, those are given in the problem as FR is given at 0 0.85, collector area is given as 1.8, S is 800 watt per meter square minus divide negative UL that is 4.5, TFI is 60 minus 27 and it is divided by the specific heat is given in kilojoule per kg Kelvin or we can say it as 4200 joule per kg Kelvin okay so we have to balance the unit that's why I have written in terms of joule per kg Kelvin so C will be 4200 multiplied by the difference in the fluid temperature the outlet temperature is given as 85 degree C and uh, inlet temperature is given as 60 degree Celsius so this one will be the 85 minus 60 so when you will solve this you will find that this value comes out to be 8.036 into 10 key power minus 3 it will come out in kilojoule per second if uh, in the problem it has been asked in the problem it is asked that you have to find this mass flow rate in terms of kilojoule per hour then what we have to do you have to multiply this quantity with 3600 then it will convert it into kilojoule per hour when you will multiply this it turns with 3600 then you will find that this value comes out to be 28.93 kilojoule sorry kilogram per hour so this is the answer that has been asked in the problem okay so if you have any doubt in this problem then you can ask me okay let's move to the next problem in the next problem it is given that find out the water outlet temperature of a conventional liquid flat plate collector of area 1.8 meter square and the dimensionless collector capacity of 25 when the rate of radiation absorption is 700 watt per meter square with the given data so in the previous problem you have seen that the outlet temperature of the fluid is given and the mass flow rate has been asked but in this problem we have to calculate the outlet temperature of the fluid okay so first we will write what are the parameters given okay so first the collector area is given that is 1.8 meter square and the dimensionless uh, collector capacity has been given when you have gone through the lectures then you have seen that this dimensionless collector capa capacity it is given as m dot cp divided by ac ul f prime and it is given in the problem as 25 next what is given the absorption radiation that is 700 watt per meter square also the UL value is given that is 5 watt per meter square Kelvin water inlet temperature is given as 60 degree Celsius ambient temperature is given as 27 degree Celsius and the specific heat of water that is 4.2 kilojoule per kg Kelvin so when you have in the lectures you will find the relation between the fluid temperatures and this dimensionless collector capacity that I am going to write as S divided by UL plus, K, plus TA subtracted by TFO it will be divided by S by UL plus K, TA subtracted by TFI and it will be equal to the exponential of minus k u l a c f s and divided by m dot c p 
okay so this is the relation uh, you have seen while solving the energy balance along the flow direction okay so you will see that uh, in the problem the inverse of this quantity that is m dot cp divided by ul ac f prime is given as 25 so let's see this quantity as p okay so what this quantity will be ul ac f prime divided by m dot cp we can write it as 1 divided by p so it will be 1 divided by 25 so in this problem the fluid outlet temperature that is tfo has been asked and all the remaining parameters like s UL, TA, TFI and this collector, your dimensionless collector capacity has been given. So when you will put these values as 700 divided by UL that is given in the problem as 5 plus TA that is 27 degree Celsius subtracted by TFO divided by 700 divided by 5 plus 27 subtracted by TFI. TFI is given in the problem at 60 degrees A. So it will be equal to the exponential of minus 1y p. Okay. So minus 1y 25. When you will solve that uh, this value comes out uh, written in the bracket comes out to be 167 subtracted by TFO divided by 167 minus 60 and this value in the exponential it comes out to be 0 0.96 so you further you will solve that you will find this 167 subtracted by TFO will be equal to 102.72 okay so from here you can calculate the outlet temperature of the fluid as 64.28 degree Celsius. Okay. So this is the answer that has been asked in the problem. That is water outlet temperature. Okay. So if anyone has any doubt, then ask. You can ask. Else I will move to the next problem. Okay, let's move to the next problem. So uh, in the next uh, question, uh, it is asked that uh, what is meant by the critical radiation level for a flat plate solar collector. So first uh, we have to understand that what is happening uh, in the flat plate collector. So as you know that uh, in a flat plate collector, we have absorber plate and below it we have tubes where the fluid carries and above it there will be a cover so to flow the fluid in this uh, in these tubes what we have to do we have to pump the fluid so we give some energy to this flat plate collector to run to pump this fluid okay so for an example i am writing it as we have given some input that is 100 watt okay and what we have seen we are saying that uh, suppose any radiation that is falling on this and uh, after uh, subtracting the losses the energy absorbed by the tube is uh, suppose 100 watt okay this is the energy that is absorbed by the fluid now what will you see that we have we are giving the energy that is 100 watt to run this pump and we are receiving the same energy that is 100 watt uh, in the uh, tube to increase the temperature okay so then why we are using this we can directly heat this fluid without running the pump okay so this is the, the concept where this critical radiation level comes what does this mean 
that uh, if we are giving energy like 100 watt then we have to achieve energy above this uh, given power okay suppose we are giving 100 watt and if we are receiving the energy like 200 watt then it is useful to use this flat plate collector okay so this is the main uh, reason to define the critical radiation level so i am writing the definition for this critical radiation level that is the critical radiation level is defined as the limit when useful heat gain is just zero what does this mean that if we are giving this uh, uh, energy 100 watt to run the pump then this uh, it should give 100 minimum 100 watt energy okay so in this case this 100 watt will be the critical radiation or oh, sorry this is the energy and corresponding radiation intensity that is it we are we will receive some radiation at some intensity okay so this is the critical uh, uh, intensity that uh, we have to uh, fall on this absorber plate then it is useful to use this flat plate collector we can see from the formula also that if we are writing the received energy that is q u equal to a c f r s minus u l t f o minus t f i so in the critical radiation level what will happen that this q u okay it will be zero sorry i am making some mistake So it is basically a subtraction that we are receiving on this tube and what are the losses. So if we are, uh, there are 100 watt that I have uh, uh, written wrongly that uh, this is the energy received by the tube. Okay, this 100 watt is the energy that is falling on this absorber plate. After that what will happen? There will be some losses that we have, uh, I have also discussed in the last lecture that the losses uh, we have derived in terms of overall heat transfer loss coefficient then this uh, if the losses is 100 watt then the net uh, heat absorbed will be zero then correspond to this sorry correspond to this intensity this qu will be zero further we can say that this absorbed radiation in terms of solar intensity that is tau alpha effective and the intensity that is falling on this and we are saying this as critical radiation intensity that is ITC subtracted by UL TFO minus TFI it should be zero this cannot be zero so we can say that this tau alpha effective ITC minus UL TFO minus TFI should be zero. From here we can calculate this critical intensity level that is UL TFO minus TFI divided by tau alpha effective. So this is the critical radiation level so we have required this much of minimum energy minimum radiation falling on the collector so we will uh, see some problem on this formula so in this uh, problem uh, for a flat plate collector if the water inlet temperature is 60 degree celsius 
and overall loss coefficient is 5 then calculate the critical radiation level and uh, given transmissivity of the cover uh, is 0.95 absorptivity of the absorber plate is 0.88 and the refractivity of the cover material for long wave length radiation is 0.6 okay so in the problem water inlet temperature is given that is tfi it is 60 degree cell centigrade sorry it's 60 degree celsius and the overall loss coefficient that is ul is given as 5 watt per meter square kelvin after that given transmissivity of the cover that is rho is given as 0.95 absorptivity of the plate is given as absorber plate is given as 0.88 the reflectivity that is tau is given at 0.6 now in the problem it is written that uh, this cover material for long wavelength radiation so why it is given because you have seen that uh, suppose this is our absorber plate and this is our uh, cover plate and then if some radiation is falling on this then what do you want you want that uh, the maximum energy should be absorbed by this absorber plate and if uh, some energy is radiated by this plate then this plate should reflect this energy and you will you will be aware that uh, the emission from this absorber plate it will uh, emit the radiation for shorter wave sorry long wavelength why because the radiation that we are receiving from the sun that is at shorter wavelength from the i hope that you have aware there from the wind's displacement law where you have seen that this lambda m dot t should be constant it means if the temperature is higher the surface will emit the lower wavelength radiation That is why this absorber plate emit the radiation at uh, for larger wavelength. So this uh, transmissivity is given for the cover and the absorptivity is given for the plate. So in the above problem we have derived the formula for the critical radiation level that we will use in this problem that is ITC is equal to UL TF outlet minus TFI divided by tau alpha effective okay so first uh, we have to calculate this tau alpha effective so in the lectures you have seen formula for the for this tau alpha effective that is effective transmissivity and absorptivity the formula for this is equal to tau alpha 1 minus 1 minus alpha of rho d okay so this tau is given in the problem at 0.6 alpha is given at 0.88 it should be divided by 1 minus 1 minus alpha that is 0.88 multiplied by rho that is 0.95 I have made sorry I have made some mistake that uh, this transmissivity of the cover is given as 0.95 so this 0.95 will be the transmissivity of the cover and this 0.6 will be the reflectivity okay so tau value is 0.95 alpha is correct and here it will be 0 0.60 when you will solve this you will find this tau alpha effective it will come out to be 0 0.9 so now we can calculate the critical 
radiation level that it ITC it should be equal to the UL and UL value is 5 multiplied by the temperature difference Okay, so I have made one more mistake that in this formula, this temperature should be the difference between the fluid inlet temperature and the ambient temperature. In this formula also, I have made the same mistake that this will be the TFI subtracted by the ambient temperature, TFI minus TA. So in the problem the ambient temperature is not given so now I am writing it as the ambient temperature is given as 30 degree centigrade okay so we will use this value for this problem so ITC will be equal to the overall heat, tran heat transfer loss heat transfer loss coefficient that is UL multiplied by TFI that is given in the problem as 60 degree Celsius subtracted by the ambient temperature that is 30 and it will be divided by the tau alpha effective that is 0.9 so when you will solve this you will find that this critical radiation level comes out to be 166.67 watt per meter square so now what you can conclude from this problem that suppose if you are using any flat plate collector then if the radiation level that is IT that is falling on this absorber plate okay so this critical radiation level should be greater than 166.67 watt per meter square if the radiation level is uh, below this uh, IT then there will be no use to run this flat plate collector okay so now move to the next problem the na next problem is for roof, roof top uh, solar water heaters why evacuated tubes are used just wait a minute So in the last class I have discussed that there are losses from the absorber plate to the ambient. So in the last class I have also discussed that there are two types of losses that is that will happen from the absorber plate to the ambient that is the convection loss and the radiation losses. between this absorber plate and the ambient now what we can see that till now we have uh, seen that there will be air between this cover plate and the absorber plate now what will happen uh, if we want to reduce this losses so for this what we can do we can remove this air or we can evacuate this space between the absorber plate and cover plate then what will happen this convection losses this convection losses will be reduced highly because to make for convection process, uh, process as we know that we require some medium and if there will be evacuated space then there will be uh, no losses through the convection there will be only radiation losses that is the purpose to reduce the losses but now we will, what we will see that uh, if we will remove this air then what will happen that this uh, cover plate is at uh, falling uh, in the ambient and there will be ambient pressure that is falling on this cover plate before uh, removing this air what was there 
inside it there was air so the air pressure will also fall from the below of this plate so there will be balance between the pressure now if we have removed this if this is evacuated space then what will happen that air is outside so this pressure will continue but there will be no pressure to balance this uh, opposite pressure falling from the above of this plate so in this case there will be no balance and uh, there will be highly stress uh, generated in this glass cover to reduce this in glass cover what we do we make it as circular or cylindrical okay so this cylindrical glass cover can handle high stresses that is why we are using so uh, i will write the summary that uh, why we are using this so the first uh, reason to use this evacuated tubes is that to reduce the convection losses second we are using this uh, cylindrical tube to withstand the stresses that is so these are the reasons uh, why we are use uh, in this evacuated tubes so now let's move to the next problem next problem is that determine the heat removal factor for a collector shown in figure below so this is the figure the collector specifications given in this problem so in the figure you have seen that till now you have uh, read that uh, the tubes are falling below of this absorber plate this one is absorber plate but in this problem what is happening that tubes are above of this absorber plate so now we have to calculate this collect uh, we have to calculate the heat removal factor so this uh, f prime is given in the figure to calculate this collector efficiency factor okay so first i will write what are the parameters given in this problem so it is given that the collector area is 2 meter square distance between tubes that is this one w is given in the problem as 0.1 meter plate thickness that is delta this is the thickness of the plate this one will be the delta it is given as 1.5 mm tube diameter so this is the tube diameter is given as 7 mm plate thermal conductivity is given as 211 watt per meter kelvin overall loss coefficient is given that is 5 watt per meter square kelvin fluid mass flow rate m dot is given as 0.014 kg per second fluid specific heat that is c is given as 335 joule per kg kelvin next the h is given in the problem as 1500 watt per meter square kelvin so this is the heat transfer coefficient that is given for the fluid suppose this is our tube then what will happen that uh, this tube is heated uh, by taking the energy from the absorber tube then this uh, heat will be transferred to this fluid that is flowing uh, in uh, suppose this is the direction that is inside this plane okay so this is the Uh, heat transfer coefficient f that is given for this uh, heat transfer sorry heat transfer between the uh, tube and the fluid that is flowing in this tube that is 1500 next bond conductance that is cb is given as infinite watt per meter kelvin 
so we have to calculate the heat removal factor the formula for the heat removal factor you have seen also before that i want to discuss that uh, the geometry that uh, you have seen till now that is uh, the tubes um, below the absorber tube so for these two geometries the value of f and fr remains same where this f prime changes and the uh, change uh, in the formula that is given uh, you can see in the formula so this fr can be calculated at m dot cp divided by ac ul and it is multiplied by 1 minus exponential of ac ul f prime divided by m dot cp so in this formula you can see that uh, we have m dot cp ac ul all these terms have been given directly but you don't know the f prime so first we have to calculate this f prime so from the formula you can see that um, this f prime uh, can be calcul calculated when you have this f that is fin efficiency so first we have to calculate this f so the formula for the f is 10 hyperbolic m w subtracted by d divided by 2 divided by m w minus dy2 okay and this m is given as under root of ul divided by k delta so we have to calculate this m that will be equal to the ul ul given in the problem as 5 and it will be divided by the k that is thermal conductivity that is 2211 into it will be multiplied by delta and delta value is given as 1.5 mm so we have to put this value in meter so it will be 0 0.0015 when you will solve you will find that this m value comes out to be 3.97 now you have the value for m then uh, using the formula this for the fin efficiency you can calculate it and hyperbolic m value is 3.97 w is given in the problem that is 0 0.1 and the diameter of the tube is given as 7 mm so we can write it in terms of meter so it will be 3.97 multiplied by 0 0.1 minus 0 0.007 divided by 2 and this whole term will be divided by m that is 3.97 w minus dy2 when you will solve this you will find that this value comes out to be 0 0.989 okay so now you have the value for the fin efficiency that is f now you, you can use this formula and you can calculate the f prime so the f prime will be 1 divided by sorry so this one is w ul divided by pi dh so w value is 0 0.1 into ul and it will be divided by pi d that is 0 0.007 into h and h is the heat transfer coefficient between the uh, tube and the fluid that is 1500 given in the problem plus 1 divided by this d divided by the w that is 0 0.1 and it will be added with the 1 divided by this w ul divided by the c bond and in the problem the c bond value is given as infinite so when you will put this value infinite then you will find that this terms will be 0 so this term will be 0 plus w divided by the w minus t that is 0 0.1 subtracted by 0 
and it will be multiplied by the F that is fin efficiency and you have calculated the fin efficiency at 0 0.989 so when you will solve it then you will find that this term comes out to be 0 0.00152 and this whole terms come comes out to be 1.01034 when you will solve this you will find that this f prime comes out to be 0 0.988 so now you have calculated this f prime now we can calculate the collector heat removal factor that is fr what was the formula fr is equal to m dot cp ac ul 1 minus exponential of minus ac ul f prime divided by m dot cp when you will put the values, the mass flow rate is given in the problem that is 0 0.014 in kg per second. 0 0.014 CP value is given as 3352 and collector area is given as 2 and UL is 5. 1 minus exponential of minus 2 into 5 0 0.988. It, it will be divided by m dot and c that is 3352 when you will solve this you will find that this fr it comes out to be 0 0.9 0 0.89 so this is the value for the heat removal factor that is asked in the problem so till now if anyone has any doubt uh, he can ask else I will move to the next problem okay so let's move to the next problem in the next problem it is given that a water heating collector with an aperture area of 4.10 meter square is tested by the ASRE method with beam radiation nearly normal to the plane of the collector the following information comes from the test so this QU is given for the two points suppose this is for the first and this one is for second so the QU value GT that is the radiation falling on the tube on the absorber plate the fluid inlet temperature is given that is TI and the, and the ambient temperature is given as 10 degree C so we have to calculate the FR that is heat removal factor multiplied by the tau alpha that is the effective, uh, effective transmissivity absorptivity and you have to calculate this FR UL for this collector based on the on the aperture area that is given at 4.10 okay so I expect that uh, till now you can you will be aware that the efficiency for the collector is given as the QU that is the heat transfer to the fluid and it will be the divided by the total radiation falling on the surface that is AC multiplied by the GT okay so further you can expand this QU in terms of heat removal factor that is AFR AC and when you write this QU in terms of heat removal factor then you will be aware that this uh, you can write in terms of fluid inlet temperature that is TFI minus TA so this is the QU value and it will be divided by the AC GT so this AC will be cancel out further you can you know that this S value is the tau alpha effective and it will be multiplied by the IT that is the so in this problem it is denoted by the GT so I am right now using the same notation that is GT so when you will put this value you will find that this neta I comes out to be FR to alpha effective GT minus UL TFI subtracted by this it will be divided by the GT so if you will separate these two terms then you will find that the first term comes out to be FR to alpha effective it will be equal it is neta I that is the efficiency of the collector and 
subtracted by the UL FR and this TFI minus TA divided by the GT. Okay, so now you can see that in the problem uh, it is asked that this FR tau alpha. So you can find the same term here. Okay, second term is asked as FR UL. This is the second term. Now also you can see that if you can write this efficiency factor uh, in for as a straight line equation that is eta equal to mx plus c so here what uh, you will find that the slope of this equation that is m will be equal to the this tfi minus ta divided by the gt okay and uh, sorry i have so basically uh, what do you try to establish in this relation you try to establish this relation in terms of fin efficiency and the fluid inlet temperature so this is our independent variable and this one is our dependent variable so if we compare this then we are writing this tfi minus ta as a dependent variable sorry independent variable that is our x and then what will be the slope this slope will be minus of ul fr okay and what will be the intercept this intercept is equal to this fr to alpha effective so now you will find that if we are able to establish a line equation in terms of the fn efficiency in terms of the fluid inlet temperature then we can calculate this slope and this intercept now how we will do this we will solve and find out so in this problem the, there are given two points so for the first point i will calculate this all these terms so for the first point first point the qu is given as 9.05 gt is given as 864 and this tfi is given as 18.2 degree celsius so now you can calculate this eta i that is fin efficiency so eta i is equal to q u divided by the ac gt q u is given as 9.05 and it will be divided by the ac is given as 4.10 into gt so i have to balance the units so this q u is given in terms of mega joule per hour so we have to multiply this 9.05 by 10 to the power 6 to convert mega joule to joule after that we have to divide this by the 3600 to convert the hour into the seconds then you can say that, that the unit for the q is joule per second and this one will be the so this uh, gt was in terms of watt per meter square so when you will multiply this uh, with the ac then you will find the unit for h watt and watt is joule per second so now the unit is balanced so when you will solve this you will find that this neta i comes out to be 0 0.71 now we have given the fluid inlet temperature so we can calculate this independent variable so this tfi minus ta divided by this gt this tfi is given as 18.2 for this problem the ambient temperature is given as 10 and it will be divided by the gt gt is 864 when you will solve you will find that this comes out to be 0 0.0095 meter square celsius divided by the watt 
so now what we have for this equation suppose uh, i am writing this equation h y equal to mx plus c so in this equation our eta is y and the independent variable that is x is equal to this tfi minus ta divided by the gt so i am writing this eta i for the first point h y1 and this independent variable h x1 so we have the value for the y1 and x1 so we can write it as 0.0095 comma 0.71 so this is our first point for the equation now what we will do we will calculate the same for the second point so for the second point the value for the qu gt and the tfi is given so qu value is 1.98 megajoule per hour 1.98894 and this one is 84.1 degrees celsius okay so similarly we will calculate the fin efficiency so this fin efficiency will be equal to the qu divided by the ac dot gt so it will be 1.98 again we have to convert this uh, qu in terms of joule per second so we have to multiply it with 10 to the power 6 and divide it by the 3600 after that ac is given as 4.10 meter square and gt is given as 894 so when you will solve this you will find that this value comes out to be 0.15 next we have to calculate the tfi minus ta divided by the gt and it will be equal to the 84.1 subtracted by the 10 divided by the 894 when you will solve you will find that this value comes out to be 0.083 meter square celsius by watt so this value is for second point so we will write it as y2 and this independent variable as x2 and we can say that the points are 0.083 and this one is y2 this one is h 0.15 now we have two points and we know that the relation is linear so we can by using these two points we can find out the uh, equation for the straight line so the equation for the straight line will be the y minus y1 equal to m that is y2 minus y1 divided by the x2 minus x1 and it will be multiplied by the x minus x1 so y minus y1 value is 0.71 it will be equal to y2 that is 0.15 subtracted by the 0.71 that we check ha huh, yeah y1 value 0.71 and it will be divided by the 0.083 subtracted by the 0.0095 and it will be multiplied by the x minus x1 x1 value is 0.0095 when you will solve you will find that y minus 0.71 and this value this value comes out to be minus 7.6295 further you will solve then we will find that this equation comes out as y equal to minus 7.62 x plus 0.78 so this is the equation so you can draw this uh, equation and you will find that this is the suppose this is our y axis this one is our x axis then what is happening that uh, we have calculated the slope for this equation and the intercept this is the intercept now what we can do we can compare this equation with the governing equation that we have written this 
okay so in this equation you have seen that uh, this ulfr value is the slope of this equation and this intercept is fr to alpha so in this problem if we will compare then this m value is minus 7.62 and it, it will be equal to the minus ulfr So from here we can say that this ULFR value equal to the 7.62. Next, the intercept that is equal to the FR to alpha effective. And uh, from this equation, the intercept value is 0 0.78. So this one is our 0 0.78. And this C value is equal to the to alpha effective multiplied by the FR. So, the value of this fr to alpha will be 0 0.78. That is a, so, these two values have been asked in the problem. So, this. So, now we have calculated these intercept and the slope for the equation. So, if anyone has any doubt, then he can ask. Okay. So that's all for today. So we will meet in the next discussion hour on the next Saturday. Thank you for listening.